Yesterday on X Defiant, I won 42 matches in a row, got way faster weapon XP, and just in general had way more fun. Let me tell you how. If you didn't guess already, it's playing in a party with other people. It could be high skilled players, it could just be your friends. You could be in the game with no microphones typing in the text chat, or you could be in a discord call just chatting it up. When I was playing solo, especially TDM, I was under the impression that people were just running around the map holding hands. In reality, when you have six high skilled players on the same team, they're all fighting over who gets the next kill and they're rushing the spawn points because they have a relatively good knowledge of the mini map. So if a full team knows which direction the enemies are going to be spawning from next, it's going to appear like you got six people all running together at you, when in reality we're pretty much racing for the kill. Team Deathmatch is by far the superior mode for leveling weapons. You might be able to get consistent frequent kills on objective modes, but on TDM with a squad getting weapon XP is just much easier than solos. It lightens the mood of the game even if you're not on the microphone. You know, it makes me wonder, a looking for group feature could improve the average player experience. Not only from just the gameplay, but from a matchmaking queue time perspective. I noticed while playing in a group of four to six that the matchmaking times were much faster. Maybe that's because we're pretty much half the lobby already and they just need to get six more people. But it's so much faster than playing solos. And I'm playing on keyboard and mouse. We were playing in a lobby with input based on. So this is only keyboard and mouse players. Ubisoft has previously stated that team balancing is done after the lobby is formed. So with a full six stack, there's no team balancing to really be done. I think this could be due to the fact that as a solo player, you have to find 11 other players, whether that's combinations of stacks or solo players. And I think that a lot of lobbies have parties in them, whether that's either just two people, four people, six people, whatever the case may be. I saw somebody on Reddit claim that with Season 2, skill rating is factored in before a lobby is made, which would go directly against what was initially stated with the matchmaking being a snake draft that was done after a lobby was randomly filled with the amount of slots necessary to make a 12 player match. If this is the case, this is unfair to punish higher skilled players by making them wait longer. I don't think this is the case because this would just be essentially enforcing some type of high rank queue time onto public matches. This should be random and prioritize speed over all else. That brings the question up of when you have a lobby with six players on the same team, how many matches are going to have another six man party? It's probably more common than you would think, but also less common than it probably should be with the current state of the game in terms of player count. We were just text chatting to one another, but we could have been taking it to another level, making call outs in game on headsets, which we weren't. I can only imagine how much more we would have been ruining other players' days if we were all running meta weapons, not just camo grinding random guns. There was a couple points in time when I was trying to level up a gun with a token running down, and there were only two players on the enemy team, so my whole team was just sprinting around the map looking for the other players, and it was kind of like a waste of time on everybody's part to a certain degree. I think the game could very much use a feature to find a group of people to play with which could improve the matchmaking time dramatically. Just by having a set group of people to queue up with, fill a lobby faster. Of course, not everybody's gonna mesh. You could have different options like social, competitive, microphone only, no mic, etc. Where you could find other like-minded individuals to play with, maybe wind up making some friends, have a better overall experience while playing the game. I can't even start on how much better the game is while playing in a party from the banter between matches to just relating to others about various things that's happening in the match, the camo grind, whatever the case may be. Even getting other players thoughts about stuff like future guns that should come, balancing changes, the state of the game. On Friday, which was the day before our huge win streak, I was playing with the same stack. We played another stack that had four highwaymen turrets placed at the B flag during domination and nobody could get past the middle of the map. That other team just had it locked down. They were clearly playing with headsets on and coordinating some of their stuff. So clearly, there's levels to this coordination shit. At the end of the day, this is a team game and it's meant to be enjoyed with friends or by yourself and the objective is fun. I think we could improve matchmaking by having an LFG looking for group feature. 
If you've never played with a group, I highly suggest looking for one and just people to add in general. You never know, you might make some friends. Guarantee you won't regret it. This makes me wonder about which ways solo players could have a better experience, such as mercenary mosh pit playlists for only solos, and how long queue times would be for that, free for all mode, gun game, and more. There's really a lot of possibilities in terms of creative ways to improve the game for both groups and solo players. This makes me think of how future playlists could have cool features such as big head mode, paired with challenges like headshots to earn cosmetics or XP tokens, low gravity mode, which I think could have been wild to have for the new air and space map. Still could be an idea. I just don't want to see low gravity mode come out and break the game with some type of bug that leads to an exploit. I remember seeing season two patch notes where they fixed the bug where you could get a vector to do sniper damage if a spider bot was on your face right before dying. I can't remember the exact steps that it took, but it's probably the same bug that causes you to not be able to use your abilities or your lethals the following life after dying with the spider bot on your face. That's still in the game. There's always going to be little things that slip through the cracks unintentionally. This is why I think there should always be a public test realm before new seasons come around so major changes don't break anything too bad. This is a big thing in action RPG games, where the community is essentially quality assurance testers, and there's a lot of people who would probably love to give feedback and be a part of the growth of the game, especially if you gave them some XP tokens or something. We're at a point where the game needs the community to stand together rather than being divided and negative to one another. Disagreements are fine and totally natural, but writing others' opinions off as irrelevant or dismissing criticism is simply not what we need right now. I'm not some spokesperson for the community, only for myself and my own selfish reasons of wanting to have fun, which I do. I just see an opportunity for more fun and engagement to be had within the game. Let me know your thoughts. Oh yeah, if you want to catch my next video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm getting closer and closer to a thousand subs.